ऑल रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर सुधांशु शेखर दास साइंटिस्ट एट बोटानिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया कोलकाता टू प्लीज जॉइन अस ऑन स्टेज फॉर हिस्स टॉक गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीबॉडी रियली आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स द एग्रीविजन टू गिव मी अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कम हियर एंड टॉक यू बिफोर एंड एज टू द मॉर्निंग our chief guest was saying that the agrivision was doing a great job for uh, bringing all the stakeholders of the biodiversity or the all the stakeholders of the agriculture in a common platform so that uh, it will give a great opportunity to us to interact with each other and we may be helpful to each other and today as in the previous talk uh, like professor tripathi has told regarding some of the experimental of the crop fields i will take you all to the field of field of the real science or the field of the real uh, botany in fact my i am from botanical survey of india and, I, and we work basically for the floristic surveys and inventorization of the country of the world resources and also we look into that ki what kind of uh, different resources can be tied up with a different organization so that we can work together and today we will uh, look up to this uh, plant explorations opportunities and the germplasm collections in the indian himalayan region and for the sustainable development when we talk about the sustainable development as today morning our chief guest was saying regarding the sdg the basic things is the generation the livelihood and that is the one of the most important factor for the generation of the livelihood and for this purpose and this is uh, the particularly the indian himalayan region when we talk about himalayan and indian regions this is a vast area and more than the 50% of the plant diversity of the country is uh, in the himalayan and when we go to the if uh, we start from this one the biodiversity the term biodiversity as uh, we all people we know that the biodiversity this is a the totality of the species or the ecosystem of the region and more precisely when we go for that this is the level of uh, the diversity the level of, when when we talk about the level different level of the diversity this may be a the genetic that is the variation within the species that may be or the species that is the variation among the species or the ecosystem when the common and the group of common functions of plants as uh, situated with the interact with the biotic and abiotic environment and this the and many kind of uh, this kind of ecosystems is uh, the makes the ecosystem diversity and where they are when we we, we can able to understand because many all the biodiversity of the country is basically is located in the tropical region of the state, tropical region of the world and otherwise known as this is the mega diverse countries and these mega diverse countries when we talk about the mega diverse countries is basically this is the rich in the floristic diversity are rich in the endemism and also this is also the rich in the different kind of the threats and when we consider this particular these three points but is rich in the uh, diversity and the endemism and the threats and this comes around the hot spots the biological hot spots when we talk about the biological hot spot this is a 0.5% of the total uh, floristic area or, or the floristic component of the those regions are basically it comes from uh, the endemism and we have two uh, of the four uh, the we are lucky that the the for example the eastern uh, himalayas are part of the biodiversity or the western ghats is the part of the biodiversity hotspots and we, we when we come to the country in our country level this is a part of uh, this is a four biodiversity hotspots this is western ghats Him uh, uh, himalayan biodiversity indo burma and the sundaland and this is ten vegetation zones with the in 25 biodiversity provinces and 525 around biomes when and you can imagine that the kind of the different kind of ecosystem diversity in the country and when we particularly comes to pinpoint to particular the uh, forest area uh, the himalayan region this is part of the two biodiversity not only the forest diversity have the great uh, uh, not only the great uh, diversity of the floristic but also this is ethnic diversity and so different kind of the uh, ecosystem diversity in this country because you can see that Uh, around uh, 50 percent, 58% of the total diversity, the total country's flora is present in this uh, he Indian Himalayan region, and out of which 35% plant is endemic. That is the most important thing. 
and the altitude variation is 200 degree to 8500 degree and the temperature difference is minus 25 minus 35 to plus 35 so that every 500 meters of height or every 500 meters of altitude the the floristic component or the floristic uh, diversity changes that's why we can able to understand that how many how many kinds of uh, forest um, uh, the wild species can interact in here and how and what are the uh, new prospects of this area and many this country, th this area also a part of the many of the botanical curiosity plants. Maybe uh, this is from Sapria Himalayana, so or maybe the Monotropa, or the the pitcher plants, or the uh, the Rheum nobile. This is this, this includes also the many of the economic plants, wh which has a great gene pool in these areas. And this great gene pool is makes the agricultural scientists, the horticultural scientists, or the, many of the commercial uh, the commercial plant uh, scientists uh, to. Uh, make a venture into that. And if you will see that the in component wise, the Indian Himalayan regions is, is having, as I told you, the 58 percent of the total uh, uh, to total floristic composition of that area. This is around 11,157 species is found. And out of uh, uh, this is, a, if you will see that, the one mo most of the germplasm is comes from the Poaceae, Asphoraceae, Orchidaceae, Papillonaceae, which gives this, this the, the, uh, the mean to say the first 10 Genplasm, the first 10 families of the plants, the wild families of the plants, is give the maximum wild relatives of the plants of the uh, country. And if you see that, around 44 percent of the uh, uh, complete uh, uh, co complete uh, enumeration of the plants is present in the in the first 10 uh, families only. And out of that, the ma maximum poesy or the papillonaceae and the rosaceae or rubies or the ericaceae, this this makes the most commercial plants of the or the uh, co commercial cultivars of those things. And we know that this is the one of the most important factor, the why the region of this country, the, this region is most uh, rich. This may be, this we can attribute it to the geological uh, lifeline or geological scale perspectives. Maybe the Gondwana uh, flora has been shifted to this area or the great variation of altitudes that is the creating a long topographic uh, relief in where as I told 200 uh, meter to 8500 meters so, so that it, it is make a different kind of ecosystem the different kinds of micro habitats where the wild plants uh, uh, the wild plants grow and this is also the large number of uh, endemics of the primitive families that is one of the most important thing what makes the Himalayan flora is one of the most important thing and this also the the because of the plant these these kind of endemic or the primary these uh, primitive species are found in this area this implies this is the primary center of the species of the many plant groups it is it is we as we know that this is also a primary center for domestication of plants for the millet and pulses and not only the millet and pulses this also this is a center of origin of the rice sugar canes mango cypress uh, oriental scotton season and if you'll see the 175 different kind of the wild uh, uh, only wild rices are found in the northeast states and also the uh, the particular in the Himalayan belt this is one of the apart from the uh, the eastern uh, the eastern parts of the country this is the one of the most important uh, factor this is most one important region where the the many of the things has been the many of the wild plants has been originated and this is not only the rice or sugarcane but also the many of the uh, orchids has also been come into the uh, commercial factor and also the legumes that is one of the most important factor legumes you can say the thaprosia or you can say the the uh, the, uh, the different kind of the legumes are also starting the high altitude ophiographies to the low altitude uh, the uh, thaprosia is also found here and this in in fact when we talk about the, this uh, great uh, uh, floristic uh, 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 wealth of the these regions, the botanical survey of India. We have four botan the regional centers there. The eastern regional centers that is having more than two lakh seventy five uh, uh, herbarium specimens with with us, and northern regional center one lakh thirty five herbarium collections, and Sikkim regional uh, Himalayan regional center, and Arunachal Pradesh regional center, and also we have a central botanical uh, central national herbarium that is, uh, that is we have more than twenty five lakhs uh, collections of uh, plant specimens there. The importance of this uh, all the huge collections is not only these documents the, the gene pools of the horticulture important wall plant or the crop plants, uh, uh, crop relatives, but paves a way for the prioritizing the future uh, collections, the technology interventions of the research of the crop development or the drug development or for the food security of the livelihood generation. Because the, the, the entire huge collections, uh, this, this opens a great uh, 
uh, uh, collaboration opportunities for the different uh, sectors of the agri agriculture, maybe a agriculture scientist or the horticulture scientist or any of the uh, florist, uh, floriculture or <coughs> and this is this is as I told you the crop uh, uh, plant, wild relatives because the the last two decades the the concern has been changed from the wild plants to the wild, wild relatives because if you see that it is estimated that last uh, uh, last two decades last 20 years we have collected more than 60 a percent of the total see uh, the wild crop relatives what we have already present present and this conservation efforts because bo botanicals of india we also have the uh, having the botanical gardens in the throughout the country and the, this conservation effects uh, the impacts what what we are uh, planning to do in, in the, what are the main challenges and the emphasis of the specific richness and also the intra infra specific richness of the variations in the inside the uh, species and the wild relative uh, many of the wild relative uh, serial groups we will see that as i already told the 175 type of uh, wild uh, rice in fact is found in inside in northeast states and also the uh, indian himalayan regions and also the wild related the solanum you can say that solanum you have a 69 species of wild plants of the solanums in the particular indian himalayan regions and if you see that uh, uh, cucur cucur cucurbitaceae from we have around one uh, out of 104 cucurbitaceae we have around uh, uh, 65 to 70 species of cucurbitaceae in there and piper you only in uh, arunachal pradesh we have a different kind of uh, tw 21 species of uh, piper species in in Ornatural Pradesh. That's why that this makes a great, huge uh, uh, wealth of the wild relatives of the uh, many of the crop plants and of the commercial plants, which which can be uh, explored or which can be uh, which can be utilized. And you can see the taros. This is uh, this is different kind of uh, alocasias. 19 species of uh, found only in the Ornatural Pradesh we have. And if you see the Dioscorias, the 29 species of different kind of Dioscorias, and, and this is most important thing. The, the species, many of the species are been edible by anyone, uh, edible in the traditional way and edible in the, in, in the commercial way. And when we, today morning, I was seeing in the one of the stall, the, the Tuber Research Institute, where they have displayed the different kind of uh, these particular Eloquasias and also Dioscorias. And these, the, the, there is a great scope for this, these particular species or particular wild species can bring into the cultivation and so that it can be the, not only the livelihood of the local area and uh, not only the livelihood, but also this will secure the food uh, uh, security of this uh, region. And but the, the most important thing is the, uh, the dynamism, the taxonomy, what, where we place a important role. Because the, the naming of these plants has been changed, the dynamism of the, uh, the collections, the dynamism of the different kind of uh, uh, the identity of these plants has been most important things. Because some of those plants have been poisonous too. That, that's why the, where this taxonomy plays a very important thing. And Sometimes before, when we when the the the, uh, the different kind of digital era was not there, many of the species which have been found in the endemic to this particular region has now been found in the other part. Or what are the things the adjacent countries? What are some of the species that have been found in adjacent countries is now also found in in our uh, our country. That that's why you can take the example of the archidendron. One of the species, the archidendron, which is uh, equivalent to the pongamia, and this is very rich in the, the seeds are very rich in oil. And but however, these, these species were not found in India, and this was only found in the China and the Vietnam and Laos. But recent uh, uh, explorations in these areas, in the particularly in this uh, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, we have uh, targeted, we, we, we have collected around 18 to 17 species of archidendrons from this uh, this, uh, this area region, and where we have uh, new discoveries also, also included. Similarly, the rubus. Rubus is one of the most uh, species which can be bring into commercialization, or they be, we can we, which can be bring into uh, the uh, the culture, the development of fruit. Uh, fruit. And th this has been recently worked out, and we have we, we have taken that minimum 29 species of rubus species has been eaten as, uh, as by the traditional population. This is Echinacea, one of the species recently been collected and uh, described from the Arunachal Pradesh, and this is one of the uh, very important uh, uh, species for the for, for uh, timber productions in the tropical forest. And this is this is many of the species which is found in also the endemic uh, plants is found in the, the this region Himalayan region is one of the uh, most important thing is uh, about the orchids. And you can see bulbophyllums or the gentiana. What is the, the what is the wild relative of the gentiana curo? 
and the archidendron this is a fruit one, one of the simplest the, the, the fruit is developed from the uh, 5 millimeter of the flower to this type of a fruit and what in the full of uh, oil content and this is Stapletonia arvonicellensis, one of the uh, bamboo species which, which can be used uh, as a food, food also. Delausia bracteata, the, the plants are, uh, are used, uh, the uh, flower petals are used for the traditional use and also begonia, one of the most commercially utilized plant in the, U, uh, um, the USA. More than $50 million uh, uh, plant, uh, the $50 million uh, dollar, dollar business they do in the floriculture, particularly in the begonia. Many of the begonia species which is found in the European market or uh, the American market, it's not, the, though it has been uh, taken from the wild from India, it is not found wild in India. That the UK can take the example of the uh, uh, begonia berkeley or the begonia tassio carpa like that. So that's why there is a great opportunity for this, for the collaboration. And being botanical survey of India, we also work on the economic resources of the, the plant, economic resources of the country. And we will see that the many of the species, the particularly eastern, eastern Himalayan species or eastern, western Himalayan species, if you see the western Himalayan species, we have a great collection of uh, prunas, sorbas, rubber, rubas, or ripes, or particularly carom, scissor, or cucumis. This is the center of, uh, secondary center of uh, domestication, or secondary center of uh, diversification of uh, the wild species. While the uh, the particularly in the eastern Himalaya, we work on the uh, genera of the different genus of the Musa or Iliocarpus, or you can see the Vigna trichogenthes. That is one of the most uh, uh, 13 species of trichogenthes is found only in the Sikkim, and 18 species of uh, trichogenthes is found in the Arunachal Pradesh. So that's why there is a great opportunity for the agricultural scientists to work together and the prioritizing the, the collections and the explorations uh, because we recently we have some. Uh, member of uh, understanding with uh, NPBGIR and also ICR for the collection purpose particularly because there is a, the, the, uh, the particular when they work for the livelihood mission. So we need to explore the, the, the efficacies of the wild plants that is one of the most important thing. And this is uh, the ripes, this is the one of the uh, gooseberries, this is the, the least uh, uh, utilized plant of the country because the, the one of the, the most uh, uh, the many of the species are edible and many of the species are, though many of the, some of the species has been uh, gone to the agriculture but in the low profile. So that's why the, we have to see that the how these uh, natural resources of the country can be utilized properly. This is again another species, this is a, again this is blackberries that is known as the rubus. The rubus, as I told you, we have recently completed one of the revisionary studies of rubus. When we started, it was only 29 or around 30 species were described in the rubus, and it is only the reference was the hookah flora from uh, 100 years back. When we worked it out, around 80 species of the rubus has been we have documented, and out of the 80 species of rubus, this is uh, ar ar around 30 species of rubus species have, have been used as a food material. And that's why there is a great uh, opportunities for that. Y it must be come into the cultivation and the particular gene has to be brought out. And it, it may also be talk, uh, it may also be hybridized with the strawberries or the, uh, the, black, uh, the gooseberries so that the, the, the local uh, farmers can be, uh, can be utilized or the different kind of the forms of the library, not only the library, monetary gain also be there and also the food security can be assay assessed. And this is the rubus paniculatus. If you will go to the Arunachal, any, any area the around the uh, subtropical region, this, the area is full of uh, like uh, weed plants only. And the food is very tasty and also edible. And this is, this is the, you can, you can see the variety of the fruits which is edible. And this, the, these fruits has to be brought out to the commercialization or agriculture now. Uh, this is another, another plant known as the Codonopsis. The Codonopsis is known as, this is, this is the poor man's ginseng. This is this, this species, he is present every, all the, the characters of the ginseng particularly, but this is, this has also not been utilized. Out of, this is the particular Codonopsis species is the, the secondary, uh, the part of the, uh, the speciation of this area. Out of 19 species throughout the world, this we have around 18 species of uh, Codonopsis in the, only in the Eastern Himalaya. Only one species of Codonopsis is found in the Western Himalaya. Otherwise, all the uh, uh, 17 species are found in the Eastern Himalaya. That's why there, there is also a great scope for this one. And this, this is also, a, again, Codonopsis for some of the species of Codonopsis. And the, the root of the Codonopsis is used as uh, uh, the, mm, the, the aphrodisiacs or this is uh, used as uh, the part of the ginseng like that. 
And gingivers, I don't, I need not to say about the gingivers, the potency of the gingivers. Hedicums, this is one of the most uh, fragrant species of the uh, family. Around 69 species is found in self, uh, itself in, in uh, the Indian Himalayan region. Around the Larsinanthara, this is another new genus, what we have re recently worked out. out. And this is, this is also having a potential uh, different kind of the genes or the different kind of the fragrance materials, which can also be in hybridized. And also Alpinia and Curcuma and also Gluba. This is uh, another potential genes, uh, potential genus where we, we can work. Because our, uh, this is around 250 species out of 250 species of uh, this gingiver members are found. This is around uh, more than 70 species is found in the Indian Himalayan regions. And this is, this is a hippopy, this is, we, I don't know to talk about the hippopy, this is one of the most uh, uh, healthy tonics nowadays in the Western Himalayan. But the, unfortunately, the species, what, uh, the, the, all this has been collected from the wild. And the, the, it, had, it has to be come to the cultivation so that the, the more and more people can be benefited and more and more uh, money or the commercial license can be done. And we have, as I told, we have a, a, the proud honor of the around 11 uh, botanical gardens throughout the country. And we have uh, more than 7,050 species around the live germplasm of the country. We, we are conserving on that. Starting from the rhododendron to gingiver and, start, and all the tree species and all, uh, <coughs> all the edible and fruit species, wild edible fruit species. And the largest uh, garden, we have the Ajasi Bose garden in the uh, Havra. We have 110 acres of land. And we have, uh, we have also a garden in Yarkow, there the orchid and the national orchid is present, the Eastern Regional Center of Barpani, this is, we have the medicinal plant garden over there. And the, the, and, but the problem is that when we talk about all these, the vulnerability is one of the most important thing. The vulnerability due to climate change or vulnerability due to the, any of the drivers, what we talk about the proximals or the maybe ultimate, the, all the global drivers. When you talk about the proximal drivers, this affects the, uh, the local in impacts, the forest uh, fires or the estuaries and agricultural lands or the introduction of the monoculture of the many of the things. The karyota, uh, the, the some of the species, the, the, this, this has been introduced in the, the Himalayan ecosystem, which, uh, which has been, uh, uh, the monoculturally they, they produce that. And this has a great adverse impact on that. And recently we have also worked on that in the climate change uh, things. The where we, the, to, today morning also I talk, uh, I speaking to uh, Professor uh, Mahapatraji, and there we, he, he was asking that there is a difference of 2.3 degree of uh, uh, temperature difference from the last one decade uh, in the Himalayan, particularly Himalayan region. So that's why when we talk about this, the, the, then then the climate change, uh, when the climate change occurs, then three things uh, basically it, it happens uh, to a plant community. Either it adapts to the plant to the new, uh, new regime, uh, that is the selective plasticity of the plant, or this is migrate, it make a migration to the higher zones, that is the shifting of the particular, uh, shifting of the particular species to a higher zone, or it may loss. It, it extinct from the ecosystem uh, because of uh, the different kind of uh, impact on the climate change. So that's why when the past, exploration or plus opportunities were there. So we usually focus on the broad range of species. Now the focus has been changed. Now we have to talk about the prioritizing the species, when and how to collect the species. Because unless we don't collect these uh, species or the wild species, uh, one day it will come definitely uh, these species will extinct and many of the uh, novel genes or uh, many of the important genes uh, may also lose. So then, what are the, the, the greatest challenges for this one when we talk about the, when we amalgam between the agricultural scientist or horticultural scientist or a pure taxonomic scientist? This is a, the lack of the comprehensive knowledge of the species concept of the plant. Because what, what the people is sort of talking about the variety or the, what the people are talking about the subspecies level, the, it may not be the subspecies level, it may be ecotypic variation. So that's why the, 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 the most important thing is the, particularly the scientists of uh, the agriculture or the noble genes, uh, if the taxonomy also be amalgamated with this uh, pure science of the, or the applied science, the more and more result, positive result can be come. And the another thing is that uh, expertise in the plant taxonomy. This is one of the vanishing subjects nowadays in the country and not in the country, in throughout the world. The problem is that the particularly though we work on the lot of the things in the applied subject because we are sometimes we, are, we fail to identify a particular species for which uh, the entire uh, experiment depends. 
So that's why the, the most important thing is, is uh, knowledge of the plant taxonomy is the most one of the important thing. And as you know that many of the universities uh, has also deleted the particular basic taxonomy thing. And people now are botany and uh, they, they are not able to understand, they are not able to identify a simple plant on which they are working. Because many times you work on the uh, plant part or flower or a uh, leaf. That's why the most important thing is imparting of this particular science, the, 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 our uh, to plant taxon, the basic things is uh, one of the most important thing. And also the knowledge regarding the distribution of the plant. Because we have the we have botanical side of India working throughout the country. We have a great data of the plants, uh, uh, what are the plants is found in the country. So we have exact distribution points of the plant and where these plants are found. So that's why it will also, the collaboration will also helpful to the other people to get and to, uh, to give the flower. This is recently, I am just going to give you an example. This is one of the, our scientists is working on the Paris polyphyla. And Paris polyphyla is found, although it is found in the higher altitudes of the uh, uh, Himalaya, but the exact location is most important. And, and when we surveyed the exact locations and we found that this is not only what the, uh, talking about the Paris polyphyla, what we are thinking of the Paris polyphyla, this is a mixture of the, the big complex. This is, this is a different kind of species are found there. So that's why that is the most important when we are doing on the experiment, this is, this is the different kind, the identification of the particular species is one of the most important thing. And fund, fund constraints, this is unknown, this is not uh, uh, new to everybody, the fund constraint is one of the most uh, challenging for this one. And loss of genetic diversity, because uh, due to the natural and, and al also in the man-made problems, a uh, lot of uh, genetic diversity is going up and, and destroying. That's why we need to collaborate for this one, for this. Uh, and when we talk about the relationship between the climate change and this is the relationship be between the different kind of uh, the species found in the uh, natural habitat, the, some of the indicat indicators uh, things we need to take, that is that it may be a phenology or maybe a community of the, the complete uh, uh, component of the particular ecosystem or the prediction modelings of uh, different kind of in what, uh, what will happen to the three years or 30 years or 50 years of time. And if you'll see that, the species composition one of the most important thing because any of the change in the climatic condition, you take the example of the saprophytic orchids. The saprophytic orchids are basically, these are dependable on the micro climatic condition of the particular plant. A um, microclimatic condition of the particular ecosystem. When the temperature changes, that when the uh, climate changes or the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, rainfall changes, the conducive atmosphere or conducive microclimatic of that ecosystem loses. So that's why it may not flower and maybe the, 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 the particular saprophytic orchids or it may shift to the other places or a change in the life cycle. If the change in the life cycle, as I was talking, the shifting of the uh, altitudinal shifting, they take the example of the Pephilopadium. Pephilopadium is one of the orchid which is found only in the particular locations of the uh, Himalaya. So if any changes as happens that, so the, if the ecosystem level uh, destroys on that, then the life cycle destroys, automatically the life cycle will change. The many of the pollinator will not come. And many of the, uh, the, uh, the associated uh, mechanism of the life cycles will lose. And change of the abundance, that is one of the thing. That's why the prioritizing now, we need to prioritize the plant exploration. The, the, when we talk about the prioritizing plant exploration, we may, it may be a potential for the medicinal plants or the, or the economy which is directly converted to the economy which is directed to come to the uh, SDG goals of the country. Or the taxonomically uniquely isolated. This is rare and narrowly the endemic species insufficiently represented in the species or digits of high priority. Very narrowly. If you take the example of the Pleonis carflorum, this is only found in the single locality, locality of uh, Barsay Hills of the Arunachal Pradesh. If you take the example of uh, any of the Eupephilopia, you, you take the example uh, of uh, uh, Panax pseudo ginseng. The Panax pseudo ginseng is particularly found in the limited uh, uh, altitudinal variations. That's why those areas, those, those things has to be taken care of first. And the superior plants, the, in, when we talk of the superior plants, this is a very cold uh, hardiness or the tolerance level of the tr stressful conditions. You, you can take uh, the, uh, many of the examples of the, uh, the high cold desert plants. The cold desert plants are the uh, very much uh, cold hardiness and those plants has to be referred and those, uh, those genes has to be preserved. 
and samples for the multiple population. That is a, one of the thing. When we work on the, any of the experiment thing, we need to work on the different kind of the populations or different kind of the ecosystem. It may be, uh, you take the example of the polygonum nepalensis. This found in the, one of the, which is used particularly in orthotitis. And this is, this is found in the 200, uh, 200 altitude, uh, 4,500 uh, meter of altitude. That's why we, if we'll have a different kind of uh, uh, the uh, different kind of the samples from the different kind of the habitat, then this will uh, help us uh, for uh, um, uh, getting the new novelties or uh, getting the new ideas or new results. And prioritizing species in both the species and the geography, that is most important thing. And insufficiently represented taxa, which has not been represented properly. Maybe it has been collected in 100 years, 150 years ago. And now we are not getting any, any species for that. So if there are new species for that or new discoveries of those the thing, then we, it will be, have a great importance for that. And the, the, this is some of the species which, which w w w we have worked upon, the, the Parthenium. This is one of the invasive species which is uh, we have predicted for the next uh, 70 years and how uh, these species will be found in the in, uh, eastern, uh, this is the uh, Indian Himalayan region. If another th species, this is Chloroma odorata. This we have worked in the, in the uh, Mizoram and we have predicted for the three, uh, uh, three RCPs that is in 4.5 and 8.5 and in the uh, how the uh, m m uh, how, how the scenario of this area in the, in the 1930, the 2030, 2050, and 2070. And we found that if the same condition prevails, then it, it will increase and it, it will, uh, one day it will cover up uh, everything, uh, all the uh, natural forests of the country. That is the most important thing because now it is, uh, it is, it is gone up to the uh, 2,500 meter of height and if the same trend continues, it may uh, have the adverse effect in the natural forest. And the, the current issues and challenges when, because we work on the field actually, in fact, we, we, we got uh, some of the challenges in the field itself. This is the most uh, challenging is the getting, uh, getting the permissions to the entry into the restricted areas. And maybe the government have the different policies and uh, the particularly those uh, people who work in the, uh, particularly in the ground, they get, uh, they didn't get uh, easily permission to enter into the uh, world of uh, centuries, bias reserves. That is the one of the most uh, things. Though we have uh, a technique to the highest extent to the, uh, the ministry, though, though we are getting the, bot being botanical survey of India, we get the permissions. Many of the researchers of the particular taxonomy, they don't get it. And uh, need for the consortium, that is one of the most important thing because uh, we work in, uh, sometimes we work in the very silos. And w unless you don't work uh, uh, together and collaboratively, many of the results which uh, is supposed to be come up with a, with a collaborative result, it may not come. It, it may come in isolated ways. That is the one of the thing. And emphasize in collecting on the red list of plants. This is the one of the thing, the red list plant is one of the most important thing, that is the threatened species. And uh, because uh, we need to work in the red list of plants and what are the importance and what are the different kind of the components is plant, uh, present on that. And simultaneously, we need to work on the conserving the ex situ and also for the in situ conservation. And the multi-species versus the single species. As I already mentioned that, if the one species has been used for the different kind of uh, uh, diseases, if the, uh, or the di or different kind of species are used for the particular, particular diseases, then all the group of plants has to be collected and all the group of plants has to be studied properly. And the single, because this is debatable topic on that, that whether the single genus or the few genera or the wider genetic diversity. Because when we work on the uh, particular species, and we don't want to restrict ourselves to collect these particular species from a particular region. Because uh, suppose you take the example of the diasporia, the diasporia of the uh, complete Himalaya, if you will see that the, the same diasporia pantophile is having a different kind of constitution and different kind of alkaloid content. So that's why that is the important thing. We have a very, very variety of uh, collections for this one and uh, a wide range of collections for this. And when we talk about the way forwards, we need to uh, signify the importance of the systematic explorations and the collection. And we, because we need the novel genes and the availability of the sophisticated biotechnology, uh, the, these tools uh, is come up for, with the biotechnology and also the breaking wire hybridization barriers. When we have able to do the hybridization and break the hybridization barrier, it is, it, it is very much wiseful and very much useful for uh, work on the wild species versus the cultivated species. That is uh, one of the most uh, thing. And problems of species concept, and recently we have been published the entire checklist of the country, and this is uh, this book is also available in our uh, stall, which is present in, in the exhibition ground. 
So the species concept, what the problem is that, that, that species concept we, we haven't changed because this, that what is a great, uh, that was a long pending uh, aspiration of the country for the having a working checklist of the country. And because after the CVD 92, the, the country was committed to bring up the uh, working checklist of the wild plants and the working uh, checklist of the wild plant has already been uh, done and also these, these, these are also available in our website, the entire checklist of the plant and till now we have uh, uh, recorded around 20,700 uh, odd plants and the entire checklist is found so that the, the species concept has been changed. And we have given the exact accepted name of the particular species, wild species, and also the all the relevant synonyms for that. And the, we also need to, uh, the gap existing between the, uh, the uh, CWR genetic resources, that is the crop uh, wild resource relative, uh, that unless we sit together and work together or collaborate together, this, this cannot be done. And that's why we, uh, uh, we invite the, all the agricultural scientists to have a look into that. And so that the how the uh, the you, uh, the wild plant resources can be amalgamated with the these research their own researchers so that it can be useful for the human mankind and prioritizing conservation or uh, we have also uh, as I told uh, we are, we prioritizing conservation all the uh, we are committed to have around 60 percent of uh, the total uh, threatened plants of the country has to be conserved in the uh, botany garden and for which the uh, BSI being a government agency is committed for that and we are working on that and more than around 50 percent of the plant uh, uh, the threatened plants has uh, already been conserved in our own gardens and the Except that we, because we have MOU with the, uh, particularly with uh, ICAR and NPBGR, we work with them for the collection of the wild resources for these uh, uh, seed banks, gene banks, and in vitro uh, collections for them, and botany garden collections uh, for uh, us. And the my ministry also gives uh, one of the uh, uh, flagship program that is assistance to botany garden, where we also fund to the different kind of organization and different kind of universities for developing of gardens and also uh, conserving other plants in the, in the in the botany gardens and when we talk up uh, way forward uh, this is uh, one the, one of the most important things what we stressed upon that ki how to uh, balance the need of the access to the genetic resources and also the benefit sharing because we uh, we also work on the traditional uh, uh, use of the plants from the northeast and himalayan region and unless the end of point is not that the, the collection of the plants and the use of the traditional knowledge, but the, the plant, the end game is that when we bring it into the commercialization and also benefit to the particular community, that is the most important thing. And the possibility of collaboration, the, the, all the uh, great uh, like-minded people has to come together and sit uh, with, uh, uh, with each other and they have to, track out the different kind of the collaborations. We have different kind of collaborations of the NPPGR. We have different kind of, we have some of the collaboration of uh, development of, uh, uh, this is wild plant resources and also wild edible plants. We have a collaboration through DRDO where we are asking, we are giving them the complete list of uh, the wild edible uh, leaves of the uh, country. And we have a project also with the DRDO we, where we are uh, uh, asked to give them the wild edible uh, fruits of the Northeast states. So that's why we, uh, the like minded people has to come together and for a, a great challenge, to face this great challenge for the, do the greater power, for greater things for the natural mankind. And thank you, thank you very much. Anyone up for any question? Sir, uh, thank you for the elaborative lecture. Actually, the Botanical Survey of India is doing really great job. And my question is that you are serving the usually forest regions, is it? Yes. But what's about rural areas? Because in, uh, for example, I'm telling, in my village, I have seen in my childhood number of uh, medicinal plants are there, uh, different varieties, uh, types of plants are there. But now, they all are replaced with either acacia or eucalyptus. No, sir, actually, you see, we basically we have been designed to work with the wild resources of the country but we have a projects like that uh, the all india coordinated projects for the ethnobiology on that project we have al already surveyed the entire uh, the northeast and also himalayan state for regarding the medicinal plant 
wild edible plant, wild uh, your what you call uh, this is wild uh, edible leaves. Because you see, the as I told you, DRDO has given an assignment to us to bring out the wild edible leaves of the country, only wild edible leaves. So because although many people or many uh, institutes have also been assigned those works, but the authenticity of the BSI what we are giving is the pure. Because uh, we want uh, uh, the in the uh, particularly in this uh, uh, ethnobiology study, we have we have given around three thousand five hundred. Uh, uh, already the uses and also pictures. So now the next step is comes to the scientist of agriculture, how they can be used. Uh, you suppose you take the example of Dioscoria, what we send the Dioscoria. There are 21 species of Dioscoria has been used. So those, we have given the identity of the plant, the photograph of that plant, from where this plant has been collected we have given and also the what is the quantity and what is the distribution of that area that also we have given. So like that we also survey in the rural areas, not only the uh, inside the culti uh, cultivated uh, plant, but only the wild resources of the country. Thank you. Because the wild, the cultivated uh, has been assigned to the NPBGR, they are working and recently we had a, a MOU with them. So wherever we are going, uh, one of the scientists from the NPBGR is accompanying with us or uh, whenever they go, one of the scientists of BSI accompany with them so that uh, it can be uh, worked out. Or there's one more question from there, the back. Thank you. Very uh, insightful uh, presentation. Uh, I just have a simple question. You, I just wanted to know, like you say, there is a lot of uh, species available for cultivation. So my first question was, for example, for the solanum, you you say that there is uh, 51 species, but according to you, how many uh, are actually edible? And among all the species that you have identified, are actually edible that we can consume and cultivate for. Uh, commercial purpose? Uh, Ma'am, in fact, uh, around 58 species of particular solanum plants are found in the country. Out of the 58 uh, plants, around 22 species has been edible, different kind of the wild, I'm talking about the wild plants. And w which the plants I'm talking about, these are the wild uh, re cultivars actually, wild relative plants actually. Unless these are the, some of the uh, uh, genes or some of the uh, uh, if you can hybridize with the, some of the species, then uh, maybe uh, some, maybe some uh, uh, drug resistance, drought resistance will be come up. So my only intention is to show that this is the wild relative plants. And these right wild relative plants, if can be crossed out, you can take the example of the saccharum. And when it been the uh, saccharum and your sugar cane, and when the, it has been the, to, uh, the, uh, gene, the, the gene which has resistance to the particular disease has been hybridized with the saccharum, the revolution has been changed. That's why this is right now to so identify the genes and unless you don't study and don't uh, see the genes, what is the drought resistance or what is the uh, particular uh, disease resistance, it, it, nothing can be done. 